Prior to attempting steep turns, let's break the maneuver down into its key elements. As with most maneuvers, you will be required to meet certain standards in three main areas, heading control, altitude control, and airspeed control. We will look at each of these areas individually before we bring them all together to perform the maneuver. A steep turn consists of a 360 degree turn. That means that the heading you roll out on will be the same as what you rolled in on. While performing the turn, you will also have to maintain a constant bank of 45 degrees. Here's what needs to be done to complete the turn within the standards prescribed for heading and bank control. Select a prominent landmark near the horizon to use for rolling in and out of the maneuver and note the heading you are on. Bug the heading indicator if that will help you to keep track of your entry heading. To begin this maneuver, roll into a 45 degree bank. Reference the attitude indicator to help establish the proper bank. You want to be smooth and deliberate with the roll in. Once you have established 45 degrees of bank, neutralize the ailerons. While in the bank, be aware that you may have to apply a slight amount of opposite aileron to counteract the plane's overbanking tendency. Keep looking outside for traffic and maintain orientation to your entry heading as you progress through the turn. You're not going to be able to see your outside heading reference until nearing the completion of the turn, so maintain orientation by tracking it on the heading indicator. As the landmark comes back into view, start thinking about rolling out. The rollout should be started 20 to 25 degrees before the initial heading is reached. At that point, smoothly roll out the bank so as to arrive at wings level at the same time you reach the entry heading. Use the rudder throughout the maneuver to maintain a zero yaw condition. This is accomplished by referencing the slip skid indicator. Because the plane's left turning tendencies will tend to cancel out most of the adverse yaw, you will need very little rudder when turning to the left. Turning to the right, however, will require some right rudder to counteract both adverse yaw and the plane's left turning tendencies. The greatest amount of rudder will be necessary when rolling into and out of the turns. While in straight and level flight, establish your visual reference for level flight and cross-check that with your attitude indicator. Since the maneuver is performed at a speed which is less than a normal cruise speed, the nose will be pitched up slightly higher than what you're used to. You should anticipate the horizon being about three inches above the tip of the Cessna's nose. The attitude indicator should also show a slight nose-up attitude. Start to roll into the bank, pivoting about a point on the horizon. As you pass through 30 degrees of bank, you will need to increase back pressure on the yoke, increasing the pitch one degree. Once your 45 degree bank is established, you can trim the plane nose up to help maintain the necessary back pressure. Anticipate adding two turns on the trim wheel. While you are performing your turns, the bulk of your work will be spent on maintaining your altitude. A lot of the work towards this can be minimized by simply looking outside and keeping an eye on your visual cues. Everyone is going to have their own method of doing so, but the principles are all the same. A popular method you can try is watching how the horizon slices through the airplane's nose. Because the horizon intersects the nose at an angle, a change in pitch will be indicated by the horizon sliding left or right. In a left bank, if you increase your pitch, the intersection of the horizon with the nose will slide to the left. A decrease in pitch will slide the horizon to the right. In a right bank, the horizon will slide just the opposite. This visual cue will be one of the best aids you can use for altitude control. The key is to find the exact spot that the horizon should intersect the nose and then hold it there. Be aware, though, that the horizon will intersect at different points for the left and right turns. This is because your seat is located on the left side of the plane. You will still need to cross-check your instruments to confirm you are maintaining altitude. The primary flight instrument you will be using to control the pitch is the attitude indicator. Keeping the chevron slightly above the artificial horizon will ensure that you maintain the pitch attitude for level flight. Back up the attitude indicator with your altimeter and VSI to maintain your altitude. Make adjustments to your pitch based on what the altimeter and VSI tell you. When your altimeter is stable and your VSI is not showing a climb or descent, then you know you have the correct pitch for level flight.
If you've lost altitude and you want to climb back up to the base altitude, roll out a little bank and increase the pitch slightly. The opposite applies if you gain altitude during the maneuver. You can roll in a little extra bank and slightly decrease the pitch. With either of these changes, make sure you don't deviate more than 5 degrees off of the 45 degrees that you're supposed to maintain. Keep an eye on your airspeed and add or reduce power as necessary. If only a small altitude change is required, simply increasing or decreasing your bank can sometimes provide enough change in vertical lift that you won't have to change your pitch at all. Nearing completion of the turn, as bank is reduced, you will need to reduce back pressure on the yoke. Do this in a smooth manner that maintains the entry altitude. If you decided to use the trim, don't forget that you will need to retrim the plane again once the bank is rolled out. Prior to beginning the maneuver, you will need to establish 95 knots. Approximately 2,150 RPM should get you close to the desired speed. Add or decrease RPM until the speed stabilizes at 95. Then use that power setting as your base RPM. As the bank is rolled in and you begin to apply back pressure to the yoke, gradually add another 100 to 200 RPM. Verify that the speed remains at 95 knots. Keep in mind that if you're climbing or descending, your airspeed will not maintain 95 knots. If you notice you're in a climb or a descent, first level off, then check the airspeed indicator. You must be in level flight to get an accurate indication of whether or not the power setting will maintain the desired airspeed. As the bank is rolled out and you are lowering the pitch, you will need to smoothly reduce the power setting back to the RPM at which you entered the maneuver. After performing clearing turns and making a position report, establish straight and level flight at 95 knots with approximately 2,150 RPM. Select a prominent landmark near the horizon to use for rolling in and out of the maneuver, and note the heading that you are on. Also, make note of your altitude. This will be your base altitude for the maneuver. Once you've established your airplane and straightened level flight at 95 knots, you are now ready to begin the maneuver. Prior to rolling into the first turn, clear the wing in the direction of your turn. Once you have confirmed that there are no collision hazards, begin rolling in the 45 degrees of bank. At the same time, apply rudder as necessary to maintain coordination. As you roll through 30 degrees of bank, you will need to begin applying back pressure on the yoke to maintain altitude and adding power to maintain airspeed. With the bank established, retrim the airplane and divide your attention inside and outside the airplane. Make sure the outside pitch reference and the attitude indicator are both showing the pitch attitude required for level flight. The altimeter should show a constant altitude, and the VSI should show neither a climb nor descent. Glance at the airspeed indicator to verify that the airspeed is within 10 knots of your entry airspeed. Add or reduce power as necessary to maintain 95 knots. Within 20 to 25 degrees of the entry heading, begin smoothly rolling out the bank and applying the necessary rudder to maintain coordination. As the bank is rolling out, release the extra back pressure, return the power to its initial setting, and retrim the airplane. After the first turn is completed, immediately roll into a turn in the opposite direction and perform the maneuver again. At the conclusion of both turns, set cruise power, retrim the plane for your new speed, and complete the cruise checklist. Now that we've covered how to fly the maneuver, let's look at the end goals for your skills in performing steep turns. The standards for the end of course check ride include Establish the manufacturer's recommended speed Roll into a coordinated 360 degree turn Maintain a 45 degree bank Perform the maneuver in the opposite direction, as specified by the examiner Maintain the entry altitude plus or minus 100 feet Maintain entry airspeed plus or minus 10 knots. Maintain entry bank plus or minus 5 degrees. Roll out on entry heading plus or minus 10 degrees.